is the start of the uh, number eight bulkhead slash frame. Um, that's what there is to see so far. So I've cut out this plywood piece, which is uh, the aft bulkhead of the head section. Um, cut it to shape. And at the moment, I'm just gluing the deck beam to it. I'll just stick a couple of screws through that. I've got some stainless screws. I can put a couple through there, they can stay in there uh, to hold it in place. <coughs> um, yeah, it, this one's a little bit different in that this ply panel here is, is fitting onto the forward side of the, of the frame part of it. Um, so, taking a bit of thinking to make sure I get it right, but I believe, <laughs> I believe I've got it uh, coming on. Yeah, but well that's the start of it, and I shall show you progress as we go on. Just about to put, as I said, three screws, I think, from up underneath through that fly panel into that deck beam to fix it nice and securely. You might remember my saw story from a couple of videos ago. This is it here, sat there, look. I've just sawn the uh, floor beam for the number eight, so it has to be um, eight eight centimetres deep. So I've taken that nine centimetre square, three and a half inch square, just trimmed a bit off of it. Um, I said I was going to invest in a decent blade for it, and I, and I did that. Uh, years ago, from this old burnt out saw that's under that stack of wood there, I bought a blade for that on eBay, um, and I was really very pleased with it. So uh, I thought I'd have a look. This blade in this saw is a bit smaller than that old saw there. So I'd have a look on eBay, see if I could find the same make of blade, and uh, I did. And let me just scan down there. Please rest assured that I'm not getting any payment from these people for this at all. Anyhow, on eBay. I bought three of these. They come as a set of three of these blades, one of Work Plus, um, that fit that saw, carbide tip saw blade. It is brilliant. I'm only using one of them, obviously. I've got another two spare ones. I've got three blades for about 20 euros, which is hellishly cheap, new. Um, and they cut marvellously. I've just, as I say, I've just cut this. Just cut that. It's, it's really a very good, smooth, sawn finish. And not only that, but with a decent blade, it makes this, this whole thing track much straighter. With the, the standard blade that comes with this saw, when you put a bit of wood through, it, it tends to wander a bit. So it's hard to get your dimensions right. But with this, with this, new blade, it runs through there straight, lovely, they are fantastic, I can't recommend them highly enough, and I say, they're not paying me, I promise, but they are bloody good blades, for, for that price, astounding, there you go, enough advertising, what I've done now, I'll come, come down to the end view, I've, this is the, the floor beam, so I've cut to length, I've cut the angles on there, it's approximate. And I've cut this, what we Brits call a rebate, in there, so that, that piece of plywood will fit into. Um, Americans seem to call it a rabbit, don't they? Anyhow, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it's called. Cut that in there, so that beam will fit onto the ply section here. Uh, I say approximate at the ends because I have to remember that the chine log will be coming in here so they'll be cut again. They don't need to be too accurate as long as they're not too short, it's not a problem. So that's that. I just ran that through the circular saw to cut that rebate out. Finished it off with a chisel up the far end there. You know, no surprises. Straightforward. Time for a cup of tea. Here's the state of play at the end of the day. Um, it's basically assembled. I've got that rebate now gluing to that ply panel with a lovely brick weighing it down. Up this end, if I come around, you'll see there that I cut a sort of halving joint there where that side frame goes into the, into the floor beam. That's gluing up. 
and the usual web structure up this corner all gluing up deck beam fixed and that's where we are tomorrow I need to put some battens up the side of that plier panel and some mahogany trim down this side that I'm indicating that's where we are it's raining outside you can probably hear it on the roof last little scan round leave it to dry I've got um bits of ply under there obviously because the remember the deck beam is fixed to the aft side of that bulkhead so I needed to put little bits of ply under there to keep everything up and level yeah that's where we are so here we are it's the next morning um just come in here closer you can see the glue all sort of bubbled up there so it looks like uh, after a after a night of drying or a drying period, whatever that might be. So that's what's going to be cleaned up next. Um, I have to take this out of its clamps and whatever, give it a good clean up. I've just uh, taken Elizabeth up to the airport. She's gone back to England now for a while. Uh, it's quite chilly this morning. We had that uh, storm went through over the last few days so that's why we had such lovely warm weather um, which is good for me to work over this Christmas period or this yeah this period but now with the storm passing of course the, the anti-clockwise nature of all it's going to bring down cold air out of north it's going to get cold again next week temperature forecast is okay for today and tomorrow Sunday it's supposed to get cold and we'll stay that way for the next week or so apparently. Yeah, let me get on with this. Get what we get what we can done while it's still warm enough. Yeah, here it is. Not much room to get it all in one shot, I'm afraid. This is the number eight station. So we're looking now at the aft head bulkhead. That batten there with the clamp in the middle of it is, is where the longitudinal head bulkhead fits. The post up there. I'm hoping to get a, a berth in aft of this bulkhead. I believe it will work. And yeah, all, well, all sanded up. I sanded up that deck beam. I've sanded up that brace down that side. Things that need doing. Put a bit of epoxy filler in round about. Clearly cut that mahogany and put it in position. Again, recycled obviously. Battens round the side underneath, so you can't see them, but you see the clamps there holding them in place. So, that's the state of play. Tomorrow, I need to flip it over, sand in that side. I'll obviously clean up the glue here on the mahogany first. Um, but hopefully she'll get a bit of glass and epoxy on that bulkhead tomorrow that'd be very good and it's getting towards finish you know it's complete in its form it's just some finishing off needed now yeah that's where we are today so got the mix mixed up puts a bit big and it's going to stir up in front of the heater i don't know if you can hear me speaking through this mask there, there we go. I've stirred it for about a minute. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and fatigue, and I wish to return. Too fast, just a stop and
kitchen again I was going to talk about a couple more books um, just quickly because I did that one with, with four books or so before I've got these two it's the one I'm in the middle of reading at the moment it's, it's an old classic Hal Roth's After 50,000 Miles um, mainly still relevant and certainly some great tips on cruising boat outfitting I recommend it thoroughly I'll put a link on my website for it and the other one that is more exciting, for me at least, is this one. Have a look at that. It's called, I've only just bought this, Sea Trials Around the World with Duct Tape and Bailing Wire. That's how I've just bought it. But the thing about this is the boat, Vila, I know well. This is the story of the Wilcox family who sailed around the world in Vila. Um, Later on, Vela was bought by my mate Scott, and uh, I've sailed on it. I've sailed on Vela. We've been under the Golden Gate twice in Vela, Scott and I. Um, Barbara was with us at least once, possibly twice. I can't remember. Vague. Anyhow, um, I worked on Vela quite a lot. I helped Scott out quite a lot. Rebuilt various bits of it together. Um, we had her out of the water and painted her. I know I built a deck box and a galley and some water tanks, all sorts of bits. Did a lot of work on, on Vela with Scott. And so when I saw this, it's only out 2017, this book came out. When I saw this, I had to buy it and read about Vela. So I'm looking forward to that one. All right, that's it. Rich as in the sunset, standing at the sea. Tell me where you're going so decisively. What's your destination? Tell me where you're bound. We can move together where adventures abound. Running free before the breeze. Are there many? Such as these 